All right, moving on to chapter 12, we're going to start at 12.2, and we're going to simplify some rational expressions. So by the end of this lesson, that's what you should be able to do. So let's define what those are. Fractions like 5 ninths, 7 twelfths, and 1 half are rational numbers. An expression that can be written in the form of a polynomial divided by another polynomial is a rational expression, and that's because you're going to have some variables in there. So it's not all just numbers. Here's some examples of rational expressions. So 1 is a polynomial, it's a monomial, and so is x. Something like 2x, or x plus 2 over x minus 3, and then some scary stuff like this. Of course, the value of the expression in the denominator cannot be 0, since we can't divide by 0. So for the rest of this chapter, we're just going to assume that x can't be 0 if it makes the denominator 0, or whatever number does make it 0. Like rational numbers, a rational expression is in its simplest form if the numerator and denominator have no common factors except for 1. For example, this is in simplest form because 10z and z plus 5 don't have any common factors. It's kind of like when you go back to numbers. If you had 2 fourths, that would not be simplified because 4 is really 2 times 2, so they have that in common. So we would write it as 1 half and then consider that fully uh, simplified. So that's what we're going to do today is simplify things. So when you have something like this first one, you're going to take a look at what's on the top and what's on the bottom. And if you need to, you can break it down into its factors. So a number like 15 is really 3 times 5, and then we have a b up there. And then on the bottom, we have 25, which is 5 times 5, and b squared means b times b. And since we want to simplify, we want to get rid of anything that they have in common. So both of them have a 5 there, that becomes 1, and both of them have a b. So this simplifies to the only thing left on top is a 3, and on the bottom we have 5b. So we're kind of dividing those two things and figuring out what their common factors are. I'm going to skip b and let you guys do that one, but if we move on to c, when we look at their common factors, Factors have to be written as multiplication. And right now, 4m minus 2 is not multiplying, so we can't cross anything off. If you look back here, all of these things were being multiplied together, and that's why we were allowed to cross some of them off. What we have to do is factor both the top and the bottom and see if they have anything in common. Pull out a GCF, basically. So on the top, 4m minus 2 has a GCF of 2. If I take that out, I'm left with 2m minus 1. And on the bottom, this doesn't have anything in common, so it's just 2m minus 1. Now, because we have the same thing in the top and the bottom here, this 2m minus 1, that can cross off. And this whole thing can be simplified to just 2. So try b on your own. Now, of course, they're going to get a little harder. And what you have to remember is factoring. Break these down into things that are being multiplied together, and then you can see what crosses off. So if we take a look at A together, at the very top, always look for a GCF. That's what you start off doing. And they do have something in common. They have a 3. So if I factor that out, I'm left with x plus 4. And then I look inside the parentheses, and that can't be broken down anymore. So I'm just going to leave this and then deal with what's on the bottom. Now what's on the bottom, if I take a look at this, doesn't have a GCF. So then I need to ask myself, what are two numbers that add to make a negative 1? And they got to multiply to make a negative 20. And those numbers are going to be 4 and 5, and I'm going to make 5 negative. Now hopefully you remember that little trick, and because this is a 1 here, I know that my two factors are x plus 4 times x minus 5 and then see what crosses off. So again, everything has to be multiplying before you can cross stuff off. Since these guys are multiplying, we can see that we have an x plus 4 in top and bottom, so those cross off, and we're just left with a 3 on top, and on the bottom, x minus 5. And that's it. This right here that we just boxed up is the simplified version of this thing that we started with. So if you, again, think back to numbers, 2 fourths gets simplified to 1 half. That's all we're doing here. We're just simplifying this. 
Just like the last one, I'm going to leave B for you, but let's do C together. So look for some way to factor the top part. And they both have an 8 in common, so I'll take that out. And then what's in parentheses, I can't do anything else with, so let's take a look at the bottom. And this big thing doesn't have a GCF, so i got to find two numbers. They have to add to make 5 and multiply to make 4. Those two numbers are 4 and 1. They both have to be positive. And then we can split this up into four terms so we can factor by grouping. So like I said in class, Factoring is only like step one of what we're doing. It's really important that you are good at factoring or else this stuff is going to be very difficult. So this factors into a 2a plus 1 times a plus 2. And now that everything is being multiplied here, I can cross off anything that they have in common. And since top and bottom both have an a plus 2, this simplifies to 8 over 2a plus 1. And that's it. Box it up. So try B on your own. One more. These are a little weird because of how they're written. So we start with A. This x minus 4 can't be simplified at all. That's its simplest form, so we're just going to leave it. But this next one here looks funny. I always like to write my x's first, so that's a negative x plus 4. These are very similar here, what we have on the top and the bottom. So one thing that you're going to have to get used to doing is recognizing an opposite factor. Since this x is negative here, if I factor out a negative 1, I would end up with a positive x. And if I take away a negative 1 from that 4, I'd end up with a minus 4. And the awesome thing about that opposite factor thing is now these two are exactly the same. So I end up with nothing on top, so there's really a 1 there, divided by negative 1, which is really just negative 1. This whole big mess of things simplifies to negative 1. Leaving B for you, but let's do C. So whenever I see something with the variable written this way, I immediately rewrite it the other way. And then I notice that these two things have something in common. So let's factor that out. Let's take out a 4, and I'd be left with a negative r. Now that's weird. Chances are you're never going to get something like that. So I'm going to go back and take out a negative 4 here. And when that happens, I'm left with r minus 2. Now that looks a lot better. And then we can do some factoring with what's on the bottom and see if anything crosses off. So I need two numbers. they got to add to make the number in the middle. Multiply to make negative 8 times 1. And those two numbers are 4 and 2. And to make it a positive 2, I'm going to make the 2 negative. So this becomes r plus 4 times r minus 2. And then, because we factored out that negative 1, r minus 2's cross off. And all we're left with is negative 4 over r plus 4. And that's it. So, you should be able to simplify rational expressions. You have three can you prove it problems to do. They're all problem B that we have here. If you are confused, write down some questions to ask me tomorrow, and we can go over them in class. Enjoy your night.